In this screencast, we will learn how to use MATLAB's built-in functions, or its quote ODE suite, to solve systems of linear, or sorry, nonlinear, first order ODEs. So to execute these ODE solvers, you have to define your system of ODEs in a function file. Now these ODEs, the system of ODEs, it should have generally, like at least written on paper, a form that looks like this, where you have, excuse me, dx dt is equal to f of t and x, where these underlines are referring to the fact that these are vectors. So for example, your x is a column vector of in, uh, sorry, dependent or state variables. And by state variables, I mean variables that have a time derivative in the problem. And your t variable is your independent variable or typically time, and your f is a vector, it's a column vector, of functions. Right, so they're the right-hand sides of your ODE equation. And this dx dt is a column vector of derivatives. So, for example, your x vector, oops, underline, is equal to, it's going to look something like this, x1, x2, dot, 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 x, n. Your f is a vector of functions like f1 of t, x, f2 of t, x, dot, 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 fn of t x. So just writing them in this format here is sort of a shorthand way of saying, hey, look, I have a lot of functions here, or a lot of time derivatives, and a lot of um, dependent variables. And in addition to that, this dx dt vector is going to look like dx, oops, sorry, dx1 dt, so the time derivative of x1 dx2, dt, etc., dxn, dt. And so that's what these uh, pieces stand for here. Now, the way it's going to look in MATLAB is you have to write a function, as I say up here, you have to define your system of ODEs into a function m file. So what should that function m file look like? So first, of course, the function m file should start with the word function. And then the output of your function should be dx dt, or some variable which corresponds to your time derivatives. It has a name, which in this case, generically, I'm going to call my function. And it has two inputs, little t and x. So just to write that down, your dx dt should be your derivative of state variables, and that should be a vector. So the output is a vector. And this, of course, my function, that's a function name. Then your first input to my function is your independent variable. So first input is independent variable. And your second input is a vector of dependent variables or state variables. So this is the way your function should look. Of course, the innards of your function you know, that's where you have to actually define your equations. Once you have that function defined, then the ODE solver, in this particular case, we're going to call ODE45. Although MATLAB has many different ODE solvers that go by different names, but they have the exact same way that you use them. So the ODE solver, you'll call that with a line of code that looks like this. So the output, you'll have two outputs to ODE45. And these outputs consist of the first one being your independent variable, that's t, and the second one, capital X output, is an array of state variables. And we'll get what, to what I mean by that uh, in a little bit, but just to um, quickly show that, uh, before I was talking about x as a vector of state variables, and this output of ODE45 is an array. In this array, the reason why it's an array instead of a vector, it's, it's a matrix, right? It's, it's more than one dimension 
is because you have your vector of state variables at multiple different time points. So it's an array of state variables x of t. Now, the first input to your ODE45 function is a function handle. And it starts with an at sign. And that's the way MATLAB handles function handles. The next input to ODE45, the second one, is your t span. And that's basically a, a row vector, which is t initial, comma, t final. So these are your bounds in time where you're integrating from the beginning, t initial, to t final. And then the final input, x naught, that is your initial condition, or vector of initial conditions. Okay, so let's go ahead and take at a look at a simple example of using ODE45. So in this simple example, we're going to look at a nonlinear ODE of the following. So dy dx equals y times the quantity x minus 1. So to use ODE45 to solve this, and it's going to be on the time interval of 0, 2. X, sorry, it's not a time interval because we're calling it x here. And your initial value, y of 0, is equal to 1. So to use ODE45 to do this, the first thing we have to do is we have to make a function. In this case, we're calling it example simple ODE. That's what the name of our function will be. Um, the output is dy dx. That's our derivative. And the two inputs are our independent variable, which in this case is x. And uh, the second input is our dependent variable. which in this case we called it y. And in this case, our dependent variable is a scalar. I was talking about it as a vector before, but since we're solving only one ODE in this case, instead of a system of ODEs, in this case, y is a scalar. And of course, as I said before, the output is the derivative. Okay, so that's the first line of our function. And then, of course, after that, all we have to do is define our equation. Once we've written this m file, we will make a script that calls ODE45, and these will be the lines of code in that script, which I'll describe in just a moment. But first we're going to head on over to MATLAB to see this in action. So as I said before, as we're writing our function, of course the first word is function, and then our derivative is dy dx in this case. Now, we could have called this variable dy dx, we could have called it anything we wanted. We could have called it g, we could have called it k, or whatever. But just to make things make sense, at least visually to us, sort of reading it and interpreting it with our eyes, let's call it dy dx. The name of this function, I'm calling it example simple ODE. The first input is our independent variable x, and the second input is our dependent variable y. And then again, the only thing left to do in this very simple example is to define our ODE equation. Just to make it pretty, I like to put spaces around minus and plus signs and equal signs. So that is what our function looks like. So I went ahead and saved that as exsimpleode.m in my current folder. And the next thing to do is open up a new script and write in the code in the script to call on ODE45. So the first line is I'm going to define my initial condition. The second line, what I'm going to do is define my interval over which we'll solve the ODE, my interval in my independent variable. So this is a, is a row vector from zero, x equals 0 to x equals 2. I'm going to store that in the variable x span. I will go ahead and type a um, variable for my function handle. So now in this variable f handle, I've stored my function handle. And then finally, my call to ODE45. So ODE45. My first input is my function handle. My second input is my interval over which we're solving the ODE. And the last input is my initial condition. So I'm just to type in some comments here. This is my function handle and my span of independent 
variable values. This last line is my call to ODE45. Finally, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and plot x comma y to plot the solution here, or what, what ODE45 has found. Now I should be able to go ahead and just run this. And what I get is such a plot where on the x-axis I have x and on the y-axis I have y. And so according to this ordinary differential equation, when you start at x equals 0 and y equals 1, then the differential equation takes on, or then the solution y of x takes on this particular value.